I wanted to quickly go over some tips and tricks for aligning uh, two meshes which only have partial overlap, e.g., uh, for example, this intraoral scan contains the, this edentulous ridge and all these gingiva, and then this CT scan data only contains the teeth. So the only areas of true overlap are in these regions here. Furthermore, because this is uh, an intraoral scan, there's uh, a region which is essentially blocked out by the view direction of the scanner. So this is a, a little bit less straightforward to accurately align than just two scans of the same object that overlap pretty well. First what I'll do is, um, since they're roughly aligned already, I'll just go ahead and glue them in place. And the default settings for you just um, open up Mesh Lab and tell it to do this. Uh, these are the settings it provides. So if I process this, um, we see we tend to get a different result each time. Um, we might end up with a good result, but the point I want to drive home here is that with these particular settings. Uh, if you don't open this up and change them, the results are unstable. Um, just while we're examining this particular alignment, when you see uh, an intersection that happens on a clearly defined line like this, that indicates uh, usually an alignment that is off by some set amount, like a shift or a rotation. What I'll show you later, or maybe if I can just happen to get lucky, When you start to see areas that look like this, with um, kind of a speckled overlapping, that usually indicates good alignment, and that speckling is just from the random error uh, along the surface of the mesh. So, to improve our results here, first thing you'll notice is that the sample number is pretty small. So what this does is it chooses a thousand random points along this mesh and compares them to all the points on the other mesh. And because only the points that we're interested in are only here on the teeth, if we scatter a thousand points everywhere, we then even further limit our sample uh, later on when we get to this minimum starting distance. So this mesh has 59,000 vertices. First thing we'll do is just increase our sample, let's say to 20,000, and let's see what that does. Alright, so if we just do this a few times, we see we still get a little bit of shift at each possible, each time it attempts to each time it attempts to align them. So even this solution isn't quite as stable as we like, even though we're starting to see better results than our alignment. So what I'll do is I'll increase the sample even further, and I'm going to decrease this minimum starting distance to twice what the average error from the last alignment was. So this is approximately 0.05. Let's change this to 0.1. And we'll make the target distance smaller, and we'll also give it um, more iterations to get there. So this will take a couple seconds to run. So I'll process and wait. We see this time our average error decreased even further. Um, the alignment looks even better still. We see speckling here, here, and here. If I could rotate this, um, which I'll do after we're, we're done here. Uh, you would see that the, you know, 
the speckling is evenly spaced on both sides. Like we have some pink showing through here and some showing through here, which is good. A good indication that the error is uh, evenly distributed. Now, one thing you'll notice um, is kind of they seem to be showing through more on surfaces which have component perpendicular to the vertical, um, kind of the view direction that the scan was taken from. Let's take a moment to pull up some notes I have here in Salud. I mean, in uh, OneNote. If we're trying to align this green mesh represents uh, intraoral scan data, and the blue dotted mesh represents the CT data, and the black line represents the actual tooth. Um, this light blue area represents the small area we get from contraction. Let's have an example here. So this is teeth, this is bone, the real tooth. Uh, and when I say bone, I mean that's the uh, Brazilian software's attempt at isolating the bone. You see that we get kind of a contraction between the two, and that's because of the way the thresholding and the segmentation works. But the takeaway is that the CT teeth uh, segmented from, sorry, models segmented from CT data that represent teeth are going to be smaller than the actual surface. Okay, and then here we see the scan data you end up with this projected area that's blocked out. And that's just simply um, a byproduct of how the scanner works. So when, if we were to try to align two meshes, one which is smaller than the other, if the two meshes wrap around the whole object, um, we'll get an alignment that's more or less accurate because it, you know, when it shifts it this way, these points become further away, these points become closer. When it shifts it the other way, you get the same thing. So the most stable spot is right in the center. But in the situation that we have, if we just align it normally, not excluding these parts of the mesh, we'll get something like this because it wants to try and take this part of the mesh here and make it close as well as this part here so you get this kind of balancing act. If we eliminate these parts um, the mesh will actually seat down a little bit further just as if you had a crown which was too big it would overseat and because this actually represents a closer solution than this would. So that's exactly what we're seeing here is this is overseeded, and uh, there's not really a whole lot we can do about that because this truly is the most stable um, solution to the way this iterative close closest points works. Uh, the good news is is that if this mesh is too low, and we build our guide on it, and in reality, it's higher, uh, it's an error in the safe direction, meaning this would result in implant placement being not as deep as planned, which is safer than deeper than planned. So uh, this is something you just need to be aware of. I mean, you could try and compensate for this manually by just kind of manually shifting the mesh upward, but I don't think there's a whole lot of benefit in doing that at this point in time. So um, just to review, method I like to use is to start with some loose settings to roughly glue, then take this error bound and double it. Give yourself a bigger sample and give yourself more iterations until you get a result that is stable.
and the way you check for stability is when this number seems to be about the same